legends, g'day superstars, it's Peps, and you know it's time for my round 20 tips for a massive round of AFL footy. Some teams have only got 20 quarters of football to go, but we know it's all kicking off tomorrow night, 7.40pm at Marvell Stadium, the Carlton Football Club versus the Port Adelaide Power, two teams that are really looking to consolidate not just a top eight spot, but potentially top four, and in Carlton's case, a top two position. These two teams, interestingly, have been a little bit up and down over the last number of weeks, but I can have, but I have to go with Carlton simply because it is at Marvel Stadium, and they love playing down at Marvel Stadium because it's quick and it's fast. Their forward line has been really impressive over the last couple of weeks. Port Adelaide's midfield has been staggering just a fraction. And I just think away from home, Carlton are just going to be way too strong. My tip is that Matt Owies is due for potentially three or four against a Port Adelaide back line that I don't really rate that much. So are Port Adelaide going to be able to win this one? Far from it. I'm going as more as five to six goals. I think this might be tied early and then blow away in the back end and Carlton to dominate this contest and win quite convincingly. Hey, another team that might win quite convincingly is the North Melbourne Football Club, the Kangaroos, versus the Geelong Football Club, Saturday, 1.45 p.m., all the way down at Blundstone Arena down in Tasmania. It's going to be cool. It's going to be fresh. It's going to be freezing. And I'm not talking about the temperature. That is how North Melbourne will probably be playing against a fired-up Geelong. Geelong have been really good over the last number of weeks. They've really got their spunk about them. And it's amazing. With no Tom Hawkins, it's just freed up that forward line. North, on the other hand, really pushed Carlton last week. And I thought they were going to take that one out. We were all fingers crossed for Carlton to lose. But they got across the line. And I just think that the way Geelong's forward line are playing, their midfield is humming. They're going to be just a little bit too strong for North Melbourne. The coldness down there will bring it back a little bit. So I reckon maybe four goals at the most. And I think Tyson Stengel, who hasn't had a, a big bag of goals this year, could be in for a four or fiver. A nice little handful. Imagine if he got the six. Imagine he got the real bag. Things could happen. And I'll probably say Cam Zerhar to kick three in a um, nice return to form as well too. All right. Talk about those two cracking games. What about this one? We talk about the 435 graveyard shift. Far from it. It is the resurrection of football time. And I'll tell you what game's going to be resurrecting. It's going to be the Gold Coast Football Club versus the Brisbane Lions. The Q clash. Talk about two teams that could be so separated from each other, yet so close from a geometric, geographical location perspective. Gold Coast, up and down like yo-yos, dominant at home, defeatist when they go away. And the Brisbane Lions, what a great win against the Swans at home. But that was at the jab of the hut. This one is at the uh, Carrara Stadium. So do we go with a team that hasn't lost at home all year? Or do we go against a team that has put themselves into not just finals contention, not just top four contention, but potentially a top two spot that going at the bye, they were far from. I will say Gold Coast are going to get their first loss at home this year against their neighbours down the road, the Brisbane Lions. I will say it's probably going to be about three or four goals. I've just got a bit of a feeling about that one. Ben King is due. I think also Lacocious is due. But I also think that Charlie Cameron has been a little bit quiet recently and he's due for a, a four or fiver as well too. It hasn't been one of those standout Charlie Cameron performances. Hasn't been a bit, has been a bit on his mind the last couple of weeks, but I reckon Brisbane are going to be way too strong. Their midfield is humming as well too. And they'll be too good for Gold Coast to inflict their first loss at home and for the Brisbane Lions to get that amazing winning form back uh, up towards second spot. Right, yeah, let's go on. A game at the same time doesn't have as much on board for both teams, but it's St Kilda versus Essendon. Really interesting game at Marvel Stadium. St Kilda, well, they had the win last week. Essendon, disappointing as normal. Essendon need to win. It's as simple as this. They are going backwards at the rate of knots. And how good will be St Kilda, who are not going to be playing finals this year, to take the scalp of another potential finalist? Because at the moment, that's what Essendon are. They are going, like I said, backwards at the rate of knots. And they potentially are going to, could potentially fall out of the final eight 
as of this weekend if results go not their way. I'm tipping an upset here. I think St. Kilda will be a little bit too strong. Memory was in great form last week, kicking five. I would love to have him kick another five this week. Essendon, will they bring in Darcy Parrish? I don't know at this particular moment in time, but they do need to have a little bit more hardness around the ball because that's what they've been lacking. I know Caldwell has been really good this year, but who else besides Merritt is really getting in, nose in the trough and getting it out for them? I'm not seeing it at the moment. So I think yes, St. Kilda will win this one in less than a two-goal win. It could be the game of the weekend and really get those Essendon supporters belting down the doors at Windy Hill for times of change. Right here. Saturday, 7.30 p.m. I'll be at this game, Melbourne versus GWS. Interestingly enough, this could be the first time that the GWS beat a team four times at the MCG. They've beaten a number of times, three number of teams three times. Melbourne could be the only team that they've beaten there four times. This is only going to come down to one key selection. If Max Gorn plays, Melbourne win. No Max Gorn, and it's a dry game, GWS win. If it rains and there's no Max Gorn. I think it'll be a very, very similar feel to how the Essendon game was a couple of weeks ago, and I think Melbourne are a chance. But if Gorn's playing, they win. But if it's a dry night and there is no Max Gorn, GWS will take this one out. I'd love to see Toby Green kick four or five, but I'd love to see the big boy, Jacob Van Roy, my guy down there, kick three or four, and Jakey Melksham to sneak in with a couple as well, because I love what he's been doing since he's come back. It is going to be a battle of the midfields. I know GWS have a nice, stronger one with, with Kelly and Canelio in there. But Viney and Oliver, uh, and also the massively informed Trent Rivers, are a massive show. But I just think, once again, Gorn will be able to structure them down back and hold them out. But without him, it's going to be very, very difficult with Briggs dominating in the ruck. So Melbourne by less than a goal if Gorn's playing. GWS probably three or four if he isn't. All right. We've already had one derby. Let's get into the X one. Fremantle versus West Coast. So these two have had some belting uh, contests over the years. And it's going to continue at 8, 10 p.m. at Optus Stadium. Now, that's in Victorian time. Fremantle will win this one. They have been in cracking form. They had their bunnies last week in Melbourne, so they virtually had the bye, and they could potentially have the bye again this week. West Coast, great first game with the new coach in um, Schofield. Last week, went back to their old ways. I just think Fremantle are going to be way too strong. Strong. The wankers with anchors, as they've been called, will uh, hold these guys down in terms of the West Coast forward line. When you've got Tracy up there, who's just been dominating, you can't ask for much more. Brayshaw in the middle. You've also got Hayden Young in the middle, Sarong in the middle. Awesome. Yes, they're going to miss uh, their captain with another broken arm, but I think they'll be able to cover him, and they're going to be way too strong. I'd just like to see some West Coast make this a little bit competitive. I know naturally they'll get up for this game because it is a derby, but I just think they're not going to be strong enough against another team who's, once again, not in just a chance of making finals. They're a massive chance to get a top four spot and a home final. Right here. Moving in to the Sunday games, Collingwood versus Richmond, Sunday, 1.10 p.m. MCG. Many, many moons ago, this would have been an absolute belter to get to. But both teams, let's be honest, have been pretty putrid for most of this year. Yeah, Collingwood teased a little bit, but they've been injury-ridden, form-riddled, and Richmond have just been, well, putrid for most of the year as well too. So who do you go? Do you go Collingwood, who were massively disappointing last week against Hawthorne, or do you go Richmond, who were massively disappointing against Adelaide? I'm just going with strength of numbers here, not very confidently, Collingwood to take this one out. Probably by four or five goals. Richmond will make a run of it, uh, but I just think Collingwood will be way too strong in the end. But I don't say that with a little lot of confidence, to be honest, I must admit. And Collingwood supporters, you can tell me that I'm dreaming, Daryl Kerrigan style, but you have to agree with me, they're not the team that they were last year. No one's scared of them anymore, um, and they've just got too many, I think, holes across the ground, and you're getting a little bit old as well too. But Richmond... You know you're going to probably finish last. You're going to get that number one draft pick. Think about what you're going to be doing for 2025 and get Uze set up for success from moving on there. Right, yeah. I've already had one game of the round. I think this could be the second game of the round. Sydney versus Western Bulldogs. Two teams that are sort of going in a little bit uh, different directions. Sydney have dominated for the whole season, been a little bit weary over the last couple of weeks. You've got the Western Bulldogs, who are a little bit dodgy at the start of the season, coming home like a freight train. This is Sunday, 3.20 p.m. at the SCG. So it is at Sydney's home ground, but the Western Bulldogs, they do not fear the Swans up there in Sydney. They love playing away. I'm going with another little mini upset here. Western Bulldogs to take this one out. The Swans just are not firing like they had in the first three quarters of the season. And the Western Bulldogs are going completely opposite. And I think with Rory Lobb going down back, he'll have enough to negate uh, whoever decides, whether it's Joel Marty, uh, whether it's uh, McLean, whoever they're going to be able to stop, uh, Logan McDonald, they're going to have enough down there 
The midfield, Trelaw, the Bont are humming nicely. I love what Libba's doing. How good is that going to be against uh, Goulden, Warner? It's just a sight for sore eyes. Heaney as well, too. And then you've got the forward line. Well, when you've got the the, the astronaut and you've got Eugle Hagen down there, you've got Darcy floating around, and then you've got the little Waitman. This is going to be a sight for sore eyes. And I think Western Bulldogs will win this one by under a goal and really put a bit of a sniff in there for other teams in the bottom part of the bot top four to maybe pinch that home final from City. Stranger things have happened. Uh, like we say, premierships are not won in July, but they can be set up. And at the moment, Sydney are just tri tri tripping over a little bit. So Western Bulldogs by less than the goal up in Sydney for a massive upset. Right, last game of the weekend, and it's going to be a very interesting one because if Hawthorne beat Adelaide Sunday 4, 10 p.m. at Adelaide Oval, they play finals. That's the way that I'm looking at it. Their form is too good. They're almost like the doggies where they're playing such good footy, it would be a crime for them to miss. But at the moment, they don't have a spot in there. And Adelaide, they were really, really good against Essendon last week. They kicked eight. They got scored against very heavily in that third quarter and are able to pinch it with it 30 seconds to go. Keys was magnificent, sensational. And I really hope that they do that again. And I think at the Adelaide Oval, they'll take a lot of that out of their previous win, a lot of pride and a lot of um, goodness out of their win against Essendon. And I really think that they'll be able to pinch this one and put a little bit of a hurdle in Sam Mitchell's finals hopes. They can still make it easily with five games to go. But this might be just a bit of a hiccup to sort of give them that reality check that they maybe haven't had uh, as much over the last seven or eight weeks. I'm really confident, though, that Hawthorne will make finals, but it just will put a bit of a speed hump this week. This will be less than two goals Adelaide's way. All right, ladies and gentlemen, there you go. There are our tips for a massive round 20 of AFL action. Like I said, some teams are only got... Five rounds of footy, 20 quarters of football. So they want to make the most of it. Are they going to be able to stop teams making the eight, stop teams making the top four, stop teams making finals all together? It's going to be such an epic finish towards the season. Make sure that you like, subscribe, ring the bell, tell everybody about us. Join us every Monday, 8 p.m., me and the J-Dog. But I'm Peps. That's tipped out. And I hope your team wins.